Hey, this is Will Welker, and I'm going to talk to you about a grow tent today and why you might want to have a grow tent in your house. The point of a grow tent, or at least my, in my opinion, the most important point, is this reflective wall. And, and the reason that is, if you look at this setup and you see these lights up here, we want all the photons from those lights to land on a leaf. And without this grow tent, we have to put the lights kind of right on top of the plants, which is possible for short, small plants, but for sprawling plants, especially larger things like tomatoes and other things, it's hard to focus the light on uh, just the leaves. But when you have a reflective wall like this, as the photons bounce around, you waste a lot less of your light. And you can also adjust the climate in here. You know, there's things like you've got vent holes, so you can adjust, you can put vent fans if you have too much heat. And these are LED grow lights. And I can adjust the height with these little pulley systems. And if you look at what I have growing in here, I've got some sweet potatoes that I'm starting to root out. I've got a hydroponic tray down here that uh, I started growing stevia in it and it got so tall, I wanted to see what would happen as the stevia continued to grow. And so, um, FYI, I discovered that stevia grows just fine in a very shallow hydroponic tray. So I'm gonna continue that. Um, I've got some watercress that was in this tray. I can't remember if I planted it there on purpose. Sometimes it roots itself. And the watercress is actually going to seed, so that'll be interesting. And this great, big huge behemoth plant is a sunflower plant that I that just ended up in this tray by mistake if you look down here you can see the root mat it's actually rooted in a 10 gallon fish aquarium just like all of these others are and the reason I let that continue to grow is to see what happens and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep it in here. It looks like it's starting to form a flower head right there. So that's gonna be interesting uh, just from an educational standpoint. I don't think it really makes sense to grow sunflowers all the way to seed indoors. Although I guess if you're breeding a, a certain breed and you don't wanna cross contaminate the pollen or anything, that would work. And this, by the way, is water spinach. It's a Southeast Asian plant. It's uh, kind of a wetland plant. It grows in wet soils. And I originally planted it in these trays, which are perforated screen on the bottom. And so this was moist soil, but once the roots contacted the water down below, I quit watering. And so this is actually dry soil. It's, it's not really um, feeding the plant at all. And the, this is the Kratky method where the upper levels of the root absorb oxygen and the lower levels are getting the water and the nutrient. So you don't need bubbles or pumps or anything like that. So it's a very simple form of crack key. And I had these tanks left over from a time when I was growing spirulina. So I thought, hey, you know, why not, you know, grow up, grow some uh, hydroponic vegetables in these and sort of avoid plastic at least as much as we can. I like to get away from plastic if possible, although it's hard. But the root structure um, in, in this system is working very good. So you can see how well that does. Some plants do better than others in uh, cracky hydroponics. Not every plant works, but there are plenty that do. And these water spinach work very good. And if you've never tasted this, it's very mild, almost tasteless. You could put it in anything. And it's very prolific. You can cut it and come again. These, these stems are very tender and crunchy, um, almost like celery, but even more tender than celery, I would say. They're hollow. And so it's an interesting plant. This is the first time I've ever grown it. It's a, a hot weather plant, so um, this would not do in a cold weather environment, but in, for indoors like this, it's working very good. And this is my moringa tree. This is my first time growing moringa. Um, so I've been uh, studying on what's wrong with it and I think I've watered it too much. I think I need to work on making that pot 
drain better and let the soil get fairly dry before watering it so we'll have to keep working on that so yeah that is why you might want a grow tent um, specifically for the right the light reflectivity and um, these things put put out a fair amount of heat so it's conceivable that you could you could close this off and have a better temperature profile on the inside even so let's say if it's 65 degrees in your basement like it is mine you can close this up and it's probably going to get 10 degrees warmer in here and when you're growing uh, a 10 degree increase in temperature is going to give you a is going to double your growth rate as long as it's not too hot so that's something to consider so I think I got this at Mars Hydro and they sell a lot of different grow lights and indoor growing type of equipment and this is a four foot by four foot by seven foot tall I believe and I think if you you know treat these carefully I think they can last a long time I plan to use this in the winter months and then probably during the summer I might retire it completely and not use it or maybe uh, maybe I'll still use it for starts or something we'll just have to see